we're going to paint the new Plasma Mancer from the Indominus box. And I'm going to paint it the lazy way. I'm not going to use an airbrush. I'm not going to thin my paint because I just want it to be done. And that's it. So first color I'm using is Iron Breaker. And I'm just going to cover the whole thing with Iron Breaker. Wow, I'm bad. I haven't even started and I'm bad. Thanks a lot, Peyton. Thanks a lot. See, so yeah, like I said, I'm just going to cover the entire thing in Iron Breaker. Uh, this is going to help a lot when we put the contrast paints on it later to get the, the nice brown bronze color for, for the armor. And also for pretty much every color we're going to put on it, since he's a Necron, there's no reason that the undercoat shouldn't be a uh, kind of a metallic-y color. I don't think the Necrons deal too much with uh, leather or animal products. I could be wrong. You know, they could have a, a Necron cow farm somewhere, but it's just my assumption that almost everything is made of metal. So I'm just going to coat the whole thing with Iron Breaker. I probably should be using, you know, Grey Knight Steel because it's the only silver that really matters. But in this instance, I am using Iron Breaker. Ooh, I went from you're bad to a thumbs up. I'll take it. It's the greatest turnaround in human history right there. So good. This model probably also should be painted in sub-assemblies, if I'm honest. But, you know, again, who, who has time for that? I'm not trying to glue a model together once I'm done painting. I just want it to be done. So now, as soon as I'm done painting, he'll be done. He does have a lot of spindly crap, though. And we'll tell you that. Um, so he's taking a little bit longer. I did this guy the other day, and he was a breeze to, uh, to base coat. He's much more straightforward. This guy, he's got all his ins and outs and all sorts of nonsense. But, thankfully, this is the most difficult part. Otherwise, it's just applying the liquid skill and letting it do its thing. I'm also not going to do the base today. Um, I'm going to do all the Indominus bases at the end. So I don't want to. I don't want to have to get out all my basing stuff every single time I finish a miniature. It's a pain and it's messy, and I get little bits of the texture paint in my water and then it gets on the paintbrush and then it gets in your paint and then then you look like then you all your miniatures look like Peyton painted them and you just can't have that so wow I even got Guy Massey to watch that's insane man absolutely insane All right, so almost done with the base coat. <laughs> Look, Peyton, it was said with love, okay? It was said with love. Um, all right, I think I've got most of what needs to be covered with the Iron Breaker. If I missed a spot, it's underneath and or under something and it'll get covered and no one will be looking at that anyway if you do the rest of it correctly so whatever alrighty rinse the brush off and then I'm just gonna use the model I painted the other day as reference so I'm just gonna try to get the what look to be like the under parts the parts maybe that aren't armored that are just purely mechanical uh, and I'm going to do them in black. And then after that, go back and do the, the bronze colors. 
So let's see. So I'm going to use the Black Templar Contrast Paint. Or Black Liquid Skill, if you prefer that name. And I'm just going to go over all the internal bits after I shake it up for a while. Contrast Paint is notorious for not coming out smoothly if you don't shake the crap out of it beforehand. I'm also looking for my reference picture in this so that I can see what parts I do want to do black and what parts I want to do bronze. All right. All right. So that's all shaken up. And let's just go to town. So I'm going to get all this stuff in here. All that undercoating. All this, like, his spine. What well, looks to be his spinal cord, essentially. I'm going to get all that in black. Um, as well as the, the underneath, like, rib cage area. And then the joints in his arms. All that is going to be black. Um, I'm painting this directly on to the Iron Breaker. Um, it's mostly dry at this point. But even if it isn't, the slight bit of swirl effect that will happen when the contrast paint gets on the semi-wet um, Iron Breaker will just make it more look like maybe it's not just straight metal. Maybe there's something else going on, which is entirely possible for... A Necron construct. Something else besides just a pure metal plate might be going on. So we're going to do that. Wow. Getting called out in the chat. That's... That's something. <laughs> It'll get clean one day. It's fine. Um, and, oh, I'm also going to do the... Uh, the handle of the weapon in this color. Uh... I'm going to try to apply the weapon handle a little thicker, though, just so it doesn't look exactly like the other metallic. Um, I feel like there's probably not any living metal or anything going on in the handle of a weapon, so it can just look like a black metallic rod, essentially. Um, but the other stuff goes on just a little bit thinner, just so that... There's a little difference in what stuff looks like. And I'm also going to go over all these wires that are on the inside here. Uh, those are going to be green later, but if you do them black now, if you miss a spot with the green later, it just looks like a bit of metal. So all about the shortcuts and not having to go back over things. Shots have been fired. You're correct. Uh, so let's see. I'm just, again, I'm just using this guy that I painted. This guy I took my time with and, like, decided what pieces are going to be black, what are going to be bronze, etc. For this, I'm just going to copy the other one. <laughs> if it doesn't look that good at the end, well, you know, it's Keith's model, so who cares? Um, I'm going to reshake my contrast paint because it's getting a little wishy-washy up there in the top of the pot. Alrighty, get all that. The only unfortunate part about the contrast paint is that if you mess up in such a way that you get a darker contrast color on a spot that you want to be lighter, you kind of have to go back and do the base coat again, which can be a hassle. Um, everything else about the contrast paints I love, but that is the only downside so far that I have found. Other than I'm sure, like, the professional painters look down on you like, ew, you use contrast paint? What a scrub. But, you know, I'm not worried about them. And these, uh, these new Necron models, even though they are obviously very well sculpted, uh, and very well detailed. They're really 
only going to use about four colors on them besides the base coat. Um, black, bronze, and green go a long way to getting these guys done. And certainly for a tabletop quality, which is what we're going for for the store copy here, uh, that's going to work out just fine. Just going to get in here inside these little rib cage things. I'm not sure how the the like inner workings of a Necron work, but I assume they're similar to a human. The rib cage protects maybe vital circuits instead of vital organs. I don't know if they have the equivalent to a heart, but you know, something a little similar at least. So then the last part that's going to be black, I'm just going to get these joints and the ex what looks like, to me anyway, exposed bits of the arm linkage here. And then we will move on to the bronze, I think. But we'll see. Actually, I think then we'll move on to deafening you all with the hairdryer. That's what we'll do. Because then I think I'm going to put a going to put a layer of null oil on the whole thing to uh, just darken the silver down a tiny bit before the rest of the contrast paint goes on. We don't want these Necrons looking too nice and shiny. I'm sure they would have polishing servants, but still. They have been in the grim darkness of the far future, so God only knows what might have gotten on them. All right, just going to grab this last little bit of the arm. All righty. So that should all be done. And then we're just going to hit it with the hair jar real quick. If you're wearing headphones, uh, maybe take them off for a second. I'm not sure how well this is going to deafen the sound. Alright, so he's all dry now. Uh, got his black contrast paint on. I shouldn't say he's dry. The paint has set well enough that if I am careful when I put the next layer on, it won't be a problem. Uh, and the next layer I'm going to put on is... Oh, <laughs> Null Noil. I'm just going to put that on over the whole thing. Um, vaporware Necrons. What is a Vaporware Necron? I don't even know what that is. It sounds awful, though. It sounds like a terrible idea. All right, so I'm just going to take the big old brush that I used for base coating earlier and get it all over everything. Um, I don't have my null oil in one of the fancy, uh, the fancy don't knock this over thing. I should, and it's probably somewhere on this desk, but I don't want to look for it right now. So, we're just going to have to risk it. And if it falls over on stream on the very first episode of Straight from the Pot, well, that's, I don't know. That means something. I'll let you people who are into Nostradamus-like things figure that out. All right. And I'm putting this over uh, the black, the silver, Every single bit more shading is never a problem. Guy, you said vaporware again. I'm guessing you linked a picture, but I cannot see pictures while streaming, unfortunately. So if you wish to describe what a vaporware Necron looks like, I would be happy to uh, hear this description. <laughs> Alrighty, so that's almost all of that done. So you can see he's looking uh, quite considerably darker than he was before. And, you know, the null oil is thicker in some spots, thinner in other spots, but it doesn't really matter. 
if he's weathered unevenly, then that's life. Or Necron existence. I don't know what you'd call that. All right, I'm going to hit him with the hairdryer again just to... Uh, just to get the null no to set just a tiny bit before we go on. All right, so that's good enough. Uh, it's been set. So then I'm just going to take a look at this guy and look at the armor of vibrant pink and blue colors, 80s pop music videos. Yikes, man. I don't think, uh, no, I don't think so. So I'm going to move on to the bronze armor swiftly away from that. And um, I wish I could say that I'm like a painting genius and I stumble or I meticulously thought out how to make this armor look bronze um but unfortunately I just sort of stumbled on it um I put first thing I'm going to do is put a the contrast agaros dunes on it that'll change the silver to sort of like a palish gold army or sorry palish gold color um, and then from there, we'll put the next color on it that will really bring it up to the bronze color. So I'm going to start with these, like, stoles, I guess. Look like Necron stoles to me. And I'm just going to put the contrast paint all over it. Put it on kind of thick, probably thicker than you'd put on other paint. Um, but that's how, that's how I get the best results, personally, with the contrast paint, is just putting it on pretty thick and letting it run around and do its thing um and now we're sort of out of the woods as far as can we mess up with contrast paint because now anything that we get this lighter color on um is black so it's not going to show up so we're kind of out of the woods now and we could we could really just goof off and do whatever we want at this point uh, anything that's silver that we accidentally get this color on, well, I guess that means it's going to be this color. And on some models, that might be a problem, but on this guy, no one really knows what this guy looks like yet. I haven't seen too many of them posted anywhere, so I'm setting the trend. If I get something on, if I get this color on something that wasn't meant to be bronze, well, now it's bronze. And that's the way it's going to be. So I'm just now doing the cape, which appears to be also made out of the stole material. Maybe this is Necron, uh, Necron cloth. These like linked together rectangles of metal. Maybe that's how they clothe themselves. But in any case, I'm just putting this Agros Dunes all over it. And then we'll let that sit for a bit. And then we'll put the second color on it, and then hopefully we'll have a bronze Necron. Uh, so I'm done with the cape slash stole area. It's a little bit too much contrast paint right there. I just wipe it off with my finger. Shouldn't really make a difference. So now I'm going to go in and do these armor panels on his arm. Get them with the Agaros dunes. Get his hand. Honestly, not sure if they would, if they would armor a Necron's hands, but you never know. Some of them do have to pull triggers, so I guess you'd want their hands to be armored up. Alrighty, and then I'll get the other hand and his other arm, and then I'm just gonna take a look at the weapon in his hand and just see what might look good in bronze to be honest um just gonna kind of don't want I, mean, I obviously know that the blade is going to be green 
probably this crystal will be green. But then at that point, it's just kind of, yeah, I think I'll put some bronze here, maybe put some bronze there until you have too much bronze and then you stop putting bronze on and you're all set. So I'm going to put some, where am I going to put some? I'm going to put some right here on what look to be the, the links or power couplings or something for this weapon. I think that'll look good. I'm going to leave this little one right here. I'm going to leave that one silver. I think it'll look uh, pretty good because a lot of this is going to be green. So definitely want to have all three of the main colors up there on the figure. Uh, otherwise, though, I think that's done. This silver pipe down here probably could get some bronzing on it, but it's going to be part of the base, so I'm not going to worry about it. What I am going to do, actually, is get these top bits right here on top of the little back spikes. Um, since most of the time when people are seeing your miniatures, they're going to be seeing them from the top down. It's usually a good idea to get your main colors, however many you have, on the miniature somewhere so that when they're seen like this, you get at least a splash of the main color. So like right now, obviously his blade is going to be green, so that'll definitely be able to be seen. But right now we have his hand that's bronze, his shoulder plates that are silver, and his spine that's black and there's kind of just not a lot right here so i'm going to go in and just make the whole tops of these the bronze color so that he gets good contrast from the top all right i think that's it for the bronze uh we could think about doing some bronze down here and i think i will i talked myself into it I'm going to put some right here on this connector. Flip them upside down. And get the connector right in there. All right. So that's the first half of the bronze color. Um, I'm going to let it dry just for a bit. I think I'm going to put the first layer of green on maybe. And then... We'll put the second half of the contrast bronze on, which is going to be Fire Slayer Flesh. Um, again, I wish I could say that I meticulously planned and thought up this this uh, bronze color, but I put the first one on. It was too gold, too yellowy, so I decided to put a brown on it, and it came out all right. So, but before that, let's do some green. I'm going to use some Scale 75 spring green i used a different green the first time um but it ended i ended up painting it darker than i started anyway uh so i'm just going to use this and the other paint didn't have the label on it it was rubbed off and this one does so now people can copy my techniques because that's all i live for just got to get the the ego hits of people copying what i do uh so we're gonna put this green I am going to thin this screen down. I know it's sacrilegious, but I'm going to thin it down by just dipping my paint, my brush rather, in the paint water and then putting it in there. The only reason I'm doing that is because I have painting under a ceiling fan. And if I don't do that, the ceiling fan will dry the paint out way too fast. And then I won't be able to paint anything. So I'm just going to come in and paint the sections of his blade in this green color. I'm gonna try to not get in the little gaps there so that I can take advantage of my wash. Um, as you can see, the it's not a very good covering right now. It's pretty streaky, but once we add two or three more coats of it to this, um, it'll look good and be nice and green. And we're also gonna cheat and put some ink on it and stuff, so. We will get to a spot where it's all nice and a flat color and conveniently since the necrons are most likely using a bunch of energy weapons if your blades are a little raggedy it's not the end of the world because people might just think you're a really good painter and did that on purpose so i'm just going to get all the sections of this blade right here 
I think I am going to do these down here also in green, but I'm going to wait until I do the crystal. It's always a good idea when you're painting. Um, even if you think you know for sure what color you want to do something, uh, don't you want to do the stuff that people are going to expect to be a color in that color first. So, for instance, this giant crystal up here at the top. Obviously, you can paint your miniatures however you want, and people's expectations shouldn't matter. But people, when they look at an energy weapon, especially with the prevalence of, you know, lightsabers and Star Wars and stuff, people expect crystals to be the color of the weapon because that's what's powering the weapon. And so if I were to do the other bits first and then still have to go back and do the crystal, I might be to a point where now I've got too much green on it, and so I'd have to undo it. This way, I do the crystal first, and then I can look and decide, is that too much green? Is that not enough green? So on and so forth. So I'm just going to let that sit for a bit and think about what it's done. And I'm going to go down and do the other parts of what are going to be green. I just want to be Duncan. Woo! Duncan does have a pretty cushy life, I'm not going to lie. Being able to... Uh, being able to stream painting every day to make money would be nice. Not my goal in this instance, but Duncan is, ooh, got green on the bronze. You know, I'm just, I'm discovering that all my colors I'm using are kind of idiot proof. Because if I get some green on the bronze, well, bronze does green as it ages. So if I don't wipe it all off, it'll just look like I did it on purpose again. And when your mistakes can uh, can look like you did them on purpose, well, then you're in Bob Ross' happy accident territory. And, you know, that's always a great place to be. So then I'm going to go in and do these little, like, I don't know what they are. I'd call them, like, plasma coils or something up here at the top. And I'm only going to do the one coat of the actual paint on these because these look like they could be some sort of exhaust sort of thing and so they wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily need a solid green with effectively what we're painting is light coming out of these um so if they're a little raggedy once we get the ink on there and everything that'll be that'll help us out in getting an effect that looks good on that well that is true we do all want to be duncan at least we all want to paint like him, at the very least. Um, I don't know how much he cuts out of his uh, his painting videos, but I mean, even if he's cutting out twice as much as he's showing, he paints incredibly fast, incredibly well. Um, like, I know some painters who paint fast, and their results are good, but I think even they would tell you they're not Duncan quality. And, uh... He's he's definitely a unique specimen as far as the painting world goes. All right, I'm going to get some more of this spring green on the palette. Well, palette, paper plate. Palette-ish. And I'm just going to get my brush wet and put it in the paint again so that, again, the ceiling fan doesn't dry it up. And then I'm just going to finish these plasma coils. Trying my very best to not get any paint in the cracks and crevices of these things so that the shade we did earlier can help us out and I don't have to go back and redo that. And the ink we're going to apply later um, is thin enough that even if we go over all those lines and stuff completely, it again won't matter because... The black that's already in there will overpower the green ink that we're doing. So I'm going to see if I can do these second set of plasma coils a little faster than the first. The first set looked like they took forever. Feel like they took forever anyway. Yes, we do know some people who paint very slowly. You are correct about that. Um... Probably not on screen, huh? Yep. Gonna have to get used to that. 
I move the miniature all over the place when I paint and uh, got to keep them on screen. I think I'm doing a pretty good job of keeping them on screen most of the time. Um, but I'm definitely going to have to get used to that. All right. Those are the plasma coils done in that green. I'm just going to look now. I think the only other green thing we have on this figure is this eyeball looking thing. So I'm just going to. And uh, talking about the painters we know who paint very slowly. Um, it would be one thing if they painted slowly and their miniatures were, you know, similar quality to the rest of us. But they paint slowly, but they get Golden Demon level results. So we can give them a pass some of the time on that. Um, we probably shouldn't be making fun of people for uh, taking as long or as not long as they want to paint. But, you know, I'm not going to stop making fun of them for it, so. All right, um, just gonna go over this plasma thingy down at the bottom. I actually haven't looked at this guy's rules. He's called the Plasmancer. I really hope he has a uh, a plasma type weapon. The staff doesn't exactly look like a plasma gun, so you know. Um, so that's the green done. Well, the first coat anyway. And if you look. You can see it's sort of raggedy still, but it's it's good enough. You can tell it's green when the ink goes on there. Come on, camera. You can do it. There you go. When the ink goes on there, it'll look just fine and dandy. All right, so I think it's probably been long enough for the first coat of the bronze that we can move to the second coat. And this is going to be, again, this is going to be Fire Slayer Flesh. And we're just going to put this over every single spot that had the aggro suits applied to it earlier. Excuse me. Then this is going to get us conveniently a very nice rich bronze color. And because it's contrast paint, it's still going to let the silver from underneath show through. So we're just going to paint that on just like that. We're going to go over all these parts that were agro stunes before and the question might occur to you is that well why did you paint a lighter contrast on first and then put the darker contrast on it surely the lighter contrast isn't actually doing anything and one you might be right uh i honestly don't know my assumption is that the lighter color because of the way contrast works as contrast dries uh, it tightens, the surface of the contrast paint tightens and pulls away from the edges. That's how it gets the effects that it does. And so my assumption is that if I just had the silver underneath the second darker color, it would look too... It would look like you highlighted with a color that doesn't make sense. But because I put the yellow underneath first, the edges are going to look like the main color of this, but just a tad lighter. They're going to be slightly yellower. More yellow. Um, and But I haven't actually tested that. Uh, I have a lot of techniques I've used on miniatures where I put a, fir a contrast paint on and then I put a second coat of a darker on over to the top. But I'm not sure I've ever actually tested the difference between just putting the darker on. But the other thing that it does help is if you miss a spot, you don't just have a bare silver spot sticking out. You uh, you have what looks to be a painted piece under there. So that can be a help, too. Um, I'm just going to keep doing it because psychologically it makes the painting look better. Whether it does or not, nah, who knows. All right, we're almost done with this second layer here. I just got to get the insides of the cape. And then the insides of the stoles. I'm going to shake up my contrast paint again. Getting a little thin up at the top. 
Um, let's see what else has to the inside of this cape has to be done. Side cape, shoulder cape, I don't know what these are called. They look cool though. I'd be willing to wear this around the town. Alright. Just gotta get that. The inside of these. And we're all set. That's the bronze. Um, I am going to go one step further after this contrast paint dries and just use a little bit of gold to highlight the bronze just so it looks a little bit better. Um, but it's not necessarily necessary. Um, then what am I going to do next? I guess I'm going to put the contrast paint on that is going to be the highlights for our blade. Well, they're sort of low highlights. Um, see how the blade on this guy has darker sections up here. The blade doesn't really have any indents other than the lines, but we're going to put darker sections on bits of the blade to make it sort of feel like energy is moving around the blade and maybe not 100% consistent in every spot. And the way we're going to do that is I'm just going to take some Warp Lightning contrast paint and I'm just going to put it in some places. I'm going to put it pretty thick so that it pools up. And I'm just going to stick it there. Um, then I'm going to pick another spot, maybe here. And just put it, put some there. Um, and then we'll do the other side. And the sides do not have to be symmetrical for this because energy may be moving at different rates on both sides or who knows. So I'm just kind of going to put it in a couple different spots here. Maybe right here also. Um, I'm not going to put it on this crystal though, thinking that the crystal is probably one of the most, where the energy is the most pure and hasn't been forced out into this blade yet. And so it would be pretty thin still or pretty thin not thin pretty uniform I guess would be the way I'd describe it so I'm just going to let that dry for a bit and then we will put on the last of the green which is going to be the beel tan green and then we'll do the edge highlights on the green and then the last shade on the green and we'll be done with that so I'm going to get the gold out and do a little bit of shading or highlighting rather on the bronze color um as you can see on this guy just on the edges of some of the bronze there's some gold like lines almost they don't look great from close up but from far away they work out just fine and give it just a little more visual interest when you're looking at it on the tabletop as opposed to just a flat piece of bronze so I'm going to use, what am I using? Um, Dwarven Gold from Scale 75 is what I'm using. Just going to put a little bit of that on the paper plate. And then I'm just going to go super fast on this. I'm just going to get some paint on the brush. And then I'm just going to find an edge. And I'm just going to paint little chunks going down the, the thing here where the light might catch it or where it might have been worn off a little bit. Who knows? I'm going to flip him around. So I always flip my miniatures around when I paint. And I'm just going to do the same thing on this side. And then I'm going to do that on this little raised edge right here. And then the edge changes and gets raised in a different spot so I'm gonna do that up here and then I'm just gonna put a couple little ones in there and get the bottoms of these and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the arm plates just right on the edges I'm gonna get the tips of the fingers just being super quick with it we don't need to be full edge highlighting here just giving it a couple little indications that something else might be going on besides just a bronze color 
Then I'm going to get the side of this also. Just go down there. Go down there. Go along here. Then I'm going to get the bottoms of these. I'm going to get the sides of these. This guy is... If you want to go all out and paint some edge highlights on a model, this guy is the model for you. He has so many places where you could spend hours and hours edge highlighting him. And then up here, I'm just going to do a little swish on the little power coupler things just to make it look again like the light is catching it or it's weathered a little bit or who knows. I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to grab a little spot right here. And I'm going to do the same thing up on these plasma, what I'm calling plasma coils, and just run the gold along the side of each one. Do it on the other side. And that'll be that. So that's our bronze done. Um, more could be done, but I'm not super concerned about it. That seems good enough for me. Um, I'm going to make one little change on the head of this guy. Uh, on this guy, on this overlord, I did a white center column of his forehead. I'm going to do that on this guy, too. I think it works out and looks pretty cool. Um, and actually, now that I think about it, I believe... Yes, <laughs> that's from the painting guide. So I didn't get that idea myself. Um, I saw it in the painting guide, clearly. So I'm just going to go get some white. Uh, the white I'm using is Reaper's Vampiric Highlight. It's technically a slight off-white, but I find it makes things look a little more real, and it's very smooth and applies very nice, unlike some of the Games Workshop whites, the Citadel whites that go on. Like, I don't know. They're chunky. Let's say that. I'm going to do this. I'm not sure what you call this thing. This, uh, this like Ramsey's extended beard chin thing. But I'm going to do that in white also. And, and this paint is so thin that it's basically already dried up at the top here. So I'm just going to do a second coat really quick. All the way down. And I'm not doing the sides of this chin thing. Um, it is my my thought that they are painted. The white is painted on by the Necrons, not uh, not the whole piece being that color. All right, uh, so we're basically done. Um, I'm gonna go through really, really fast with the best color in the game. Besides Gorthor Brown, I mean, I don't need to say that, but Grey Knight Steel. I'm just going to flick some highlights on the edges of the armor, the silver armor, that is. Just going to go like this, just to make it look a little different. I'm actually going to do that on the, the top of the spine also. I think there's just a little too much black in there. And... It needs to be highlighted just a little bit, especially since this part of the spine is exposed. That would be the part that would be weathering more quickly, assuming Necrons even weather. I assume that they are not uh, immune to the elements, but I could be very wrong. I'm just going to do this cartouche also in uh, some silver, but make it look a little weathered. Put some highlights down here on the spear bottom of the spear just like that and clearly i didn't talk about it but i clearly decided to not do these bottom bits in a silver so i mean in a green rather so i'm going to highlight them just a tiny bit get some highlights on his face the front of these and this cartouche in here side of his head and that should oh i'm going to get the cartouche on the other side just get it shaded just a tiny bit. 
I'm going to grab the other side of the armor plate here. And... Oh yeah, this wire in here. Remember I said earlier, if you were watching earlier, this wire was going to be green carrying the plasma. But I often do this with painting. If I'm done with a color and I don't want to go back to it, things will get changed to a different color very quickly. So this cable, I've discovered in my extensive research, it's not actually a plasma cable. It's just a silver cable. Yep. Never even... Never even planned on having it green. And if you say I did, well, I'll call you a liar. All right, so that's the silver done. Um, just a couple highlights on the back there. Just to break it up a little bit. Now I'm going to do the th what I think is the third to last color, um, which is, oh, that's a barcode, Beal Tan Green. And I'm just going to do this all over the green that I've already put on the miniature. Uh, everywhere it is, I'm going to put it on. And um, if I get it off of the green a little bit, it's not the end of the world if it gets on the silver a little bit or maybe on the bronze. It's not the end of the world because I imagine these things are giving off light. And so if if they just get a slight glow texture to them, or slight glow look, then, you know, no one's going to care. So just get that up on these. And that's that. And then I'm going to do the weapon. Well, let me do the crystal first, and then we'll talk about the weapon. The actual blade of the weapon. I'm going to do it slightly differently. On all these other parts, I'm just getting the paint on. Um, just needs to be there. Yes, extensive research, Nathan. Don't judge me. Um... <laughs> extensive research of my brain for 30 seconds so then with this blade um, I'm going to start at the top of both sections and I'm going to bring the ink straight down and then I'm not going to touch it and you see how it pools just slightly right here and right there that's great I don't need to worry about making it do anything fancy I'm just going to pull it straight down and it's going to pool where it naturally wants to pool I did get a little too much on the silver right here. I'm just going to grab that with my wet brush. Get it off there. And then I'm just going to make sure to go in and get the back of the blade and make sure there's enough ink on there so that it doesn't look out of place. All right. So that's that. I'm going to hit this with the hairdryer again. Oh, I missed a spot. I always do this. I will close the paint. And as I'm closing the paint, I'll see a spot that needs to be green. And in this case, it's the eyeball on this guy. I'm just going to get a little bit of green on there. All right. So I'm going to hit this with the hair dryer. And then we're going to do some dreaded edge highlighting. He's back. So, normally you'd want to edge highlight with a color that's at least close to the color that uh, your base coat is in or your highlight shade. Your highlight shade is in. In this case, this is my highlight shade, and I'm going to be highlight edge highlighting it with a white. So, normally it's very far off. You would not want to do this. However, I'm going to cheat later, and I'm going to put this contrast plague bearer flesh on it that will change the white into more of a light green. And I know what you're saying. I could just highlight in a closer color to the green. That's true. I could. Um, but, A, I have the white right here, so I'm all for that. But also, the contrast Plague Bearer flesh that I'm going to put on later, um, because I'm not just going to be applying it to the edge highlights, but to the entire blade that is being edge highlighted um it'll sort of pull all that stuff together and it will sort of 
I'm not exactly sure what the term would be, but it will just make everything look like it belongs together. Um, so I'm just going to edge highlight real quick. I'll get the edges of the crystal here. Again, I'm doing a sort of a a raggedy edge highlight, I guess you'd say, um, because I'm imagining there's a lot of energy in these things. And so there's a little bit of wiggle, basically, in the edge highlights that can help us in showing that there's energy flowing through these things. It's just going to do this get this last last little bit here oh I missed one good it's close enough for government work I'm just going to do the edge of the blade real quick um, I'm also going to do the internal edges of the blade and what I mean by that is just the little ridges of the blade. I'm sure there are probably sword masters who could tell you what this the actual term for this is. But I'm going to tell, call it the internal ridge. I'm just trying to be super careful and just do the top of it like that. And then also there. And then I'm going to do right here, right here, and then, yep, that looks good to me. I'm going to flip it around, make sure there's enough highlight on this side of the blade. I'm going to do this. That looks acceptable. I'm going to do that. So there's a little bit there. And then I'm just going to come in and try to hit both sides of these. The little ridge on the plasma coils here. Um, just so that when I put the plague bearer back on it, they'll look like it'll look like something happened to them. And then just with the ball down here, I'm just going to do a a little white swish like that and the same thing with his eyeball just gonna do a little white swish that'll do and this white is so thin that it's probably already set well enough so then we're just gonna get the plague bearer flush out that's gonna be the last color a bevel yeah that's the word a bevel So yeah, we edge highlighted the bevel earlier. All right. I got some white in my paintbrush. Dried on the bristles. Probably because I don't thin my paint. I don't care. All right. So then I'm just going to put this Plague Bearer flesh directly over the white edge highlights. And the rest of the blade, I should say. And it's just going to be like a... I don't know if you've uh, if you've ever read about or maybe personally done um, color grading for movies and TV. I've personally never done it, but I've read about it because I'm a I enjoy the movies and their behind the scenes sort of things. Um, it's sort of like color grading a scene, um, except instead of color grading a screen, obviously we're just color grading these plasma e bits, and that gives it. Just a little bit more coherency. That's the word I was looking for earlier. Coherency of color. And that, I think, is that. Um, again, he's not, like, ridiculously detailed. Uh, there's some edge highlights in some places. But from the table, three feet away, you can see the bronze, you can see the black, you can see the silver, you can see the green... His base will be done with the rest of the Indominus stuff. And uh, then he'll be good to go. Um, I think that's about it for today. Um, I'll probably, I don't know. 
I might try to do this again tomorrow, depending on the miniature I'm painting. He lends himself very well to painting on stream because he's so few colors and I can get him done in however long it's been. I can't imagine it's been more than an hour. Yep, 55 minutes. Um, so depending on what I'm doing tomorrow, I might stream again then. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.